تجده عونا عونا لك في النوائي كل هم وغم سينجلي بولاية بولايتك يا علي يا علي السلام عليكم Brothers and sisters and welcome to Verses of Love First of all we send our congratulations to the Imam of our time May Allah hasten his reappearance insha'Allah Today we are joined by very beautiful guests. On my left hand side, we have Sayyid Zafar Abbas and Mullah Ali Fadil. And on my right, we have Shahbaz. And inshallah, we'll start off very briefly with Sayyid uh, Zafar. Um, just give us a quick analysis about Eid al Ghadir. Bismillah <coughs> ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa alihi tahirin. The day or the Eid of Qadir is the greatest of our Eids and of the of the Islamic calendar. Uh, Imam Sadiq alayhi salatu salam says, Wa Eidullah al Akbar, mm -hmm. the greatest, grandest Eid in the whole of the calendar. And uh, analysis, even a detailed analysis about the day would be insufficient to uh, for us to realize the importance and the grandeur of this day. But briefly, of course, it's the completion of the Hajj of the Holy Prophet of Islam. And once he's coming back from the Hajj, he is ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a verse of the Holy Quran, Surah 5, verse 67, to pause, to stop the, all the people who are traveling with him, and then to deliver this announcement that is so important that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if you don't deliver this announcement it's as if you didn't deliver the message at all. Holy Prophet of Islam as a result of this commandment stops he stops at this place in between Mecca and Medina known as uh, Khum and Khadir, Khadir referring to the pond that was that was there. Um, and those of the Hujjaj who uh, are familiar with the places of Miqat where one puts on the Ihram, one of the Miqat is at Juhfa, which is where the event of Khadir took place. In any case, the Holy Prophet of Islam stops at this place and then he instructs people to gather all the people around. And once they've all gathered and they've come together, then the Holy Prophet of Islam as for a very interesting instruction of building a mimbar, which of course in the middle of the desert, how, how is a mimbar going to be built? So he orders all the camel saddles to be brought out and he stands on the camel saddles in order to deliver the, this famous sermon. In this sermon, three hours long, very hot day, hottest part of the day, people are sweating and waiting to hear what is it the Holy Prophet Islam wants to deliver. And at the end of the sermon, he invites them towards this uh, authority and towards this important point regarding the transfer of authority from the Holy Prophet of Islam towards Imam Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salatu 
at the conclusion of the sermon, he then invites everyone to now to emphasize the importance of this, to uh, a tent is erected, Imam Amir al sits in the tent, every single person present at that place is told you have to go in and pledge allegiance to Imam Amir al including the women. And for that, uh, a bowl of water is brought and they are told that Imam Amir al will put his hand in the water and then you will put your hand in the water and that will be considered the pledge of allegiance for the women. So after, of course, this process, over 100,000 people present, takes a couple of days, they all camp there, they wait as every each and every individual is ordered to follow this command. After the conclusion of this, the Holy Prophet of Islam summarizes or ends the, the this announcement and the ayat of completion of religion is revealed. So the beginning of the event of Ghadir is an invitation or an order to the Holy Prophet of Islam to deliver this important message. Once he's delivered the message, ayat of completion of religion, Surah 5 verse 3 is revealed, which informs us regarding the completion, the takmil of the religion of Islam. And uh, therefore, the announcement of the Wilayat of Amirul Mu'min Salam is the completion of the religion. And for this reason, Imam Salam considers this day to be the greatest, grandest, the biggest celebration in the calendar because it is the day of the completion of religion through the Wilayat of Imam Amirul Mu'min alayhi of the Salatu Salam. Accepting, accepting our next guest is a poet who is a son of a poet, a very dear friend of mine, Shahbaz. Uh, I know that your father has been writing poetry for quite a long time. And um, inshallah, you're obviously following the good footsteps. Inshallah, I try. Um, I, I do try. Um, but this is actually a poem my dad has written, um, following on nicely from what the Sayyid had left off. Um, the word that was used is complete and not perfect and the poem goes to say today this religion is complete is what Allah did say today this religion is complete is what Allah did say why did he not use the word perfect in the revelation that day why did he not use the word perfect in the revelation that day Ali is your Mawla in the desert was appointed our leader many heard but still went astray only with Ali's leadership could religion be perfect in the perfect way only with Ali's leadership could a religion be perfect in the perfect way. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. I have another poem, inshallah, um, which outlines the greatness of Amir al Mu'mineen, Imam Ali alayhi salam. He is a mercy, he is a prayer, he is Ya Ali. Unlike Adam, he was never misled, he did not eat from the tree. Nor like Ibrahim did he need a blindfold. His sacrifice he could see. Unlike Musa, no mask for any task did ask he. Nor like Isa did he ever say, O Lord, why have you forsaken me? But like Muhammad, he could not be. But like Muhammad, he could not be. For he himself even said, Even the dust under Muhammad's feet is better than me. If this is true, then someone please tell me. Why did Muhammad say Ali is with the truth and the truth is with Ali? Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. And the third poem I have for this part, inshallah, is a very powerful poem and is not to be mistaken and needs to be understood very carefully. To be like Ali is hard. To be like Ali is hard, but it is harder to make him again. To be like Ali is hard, but it is harder to make him again. For a new Ahmed, a new Zahra, and a new Kaaba would not be the same. For a new Ahmed, a new Kaaba, a new Zahra would not be the same. And Ali is he that the Nusairi called by Allah's name. Brother, Allah does not make Allah again and again. Brothers, Allah does not make Allah again and again. Salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. So, what made you choose the, um, 
the path of writing poetry same as your father does? I feel um, with the love of the Ahlul Bayt is something that floods many people's hearts. Um, and similarly with the grief of the Ahlul Bayt, it's, it's something that engulfs your heart with so much passion and so much pride. And it's what we strive, you know, it's what our life is. It's, it's love for the Ahlul Bayt and grief in their grief and happiness in their happiness. And there's, there's so many different ways of showing that, whether it's through your actions, whether it's through your words, whether it's through speaking on a mimbar. But for my dad, he found a way through his poetry. And growing up in that environment, I found it um, in a similar way. And from a young age, I was encouraged to recite and write uh, in love and in awe of the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. So that's why I found poetry um, the, the way to express my love for the Ahlul Bayt as well. Inshallah, you stay on this path. Uh, for a long time, inshallah. Our next guest uh, needs no introduction. Mullah Ali Fadil has excelled himself in the khidma of Aba Abdullah Al Hussein in the English language. He is the leading uh, reciter in the English language, and mashallah, till now he has affected many of hearts. He's touched many of hearts around the world, and uh, we are lucky to have uh, Mullah Ali uh, among us today. Mullah. How's things? Not bad. Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much for the kind words, by the way. I really, Allah really appreciate it. Um, Thank you. Mullah, you have been reciting for a long, long time. Yeah. Especially in the English language. Yeah. Um, what encouraged you from the start? I mean, to say that it's been complete, this task, um, it's been complete is, is, is a lie. I mean, this is, this is an ongoing thing that many reciters um, are facing challenges um i along with every other english english reciter is is facing the challenge of trying to fit the english vocabulary into um different types of melodies um these different types of melodies can range from different backgrounds and cultures so i mean i originally just go back to the iraqi style of of melodies and sometimes like for, for us for example me and you are, are iraqi so if i was to recite english words to an iraqi tune you would know that's an iraqi tune therefore like automatically be thinking well i kind of just prefer the arabic yeah. right yeah, yeah. but to a non-iraqi it sounds different to them so it's new so therefore what i'm doing is 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 cross like cross matching different different tunes and, and, and words and melodies to, to hopefully see like for that kind of community maybe this kind of tune works and for this kind of community maybe that kind of tune works. Of course it is a work in progress but what we're, what we're finding is that the reason why English is being pushed out there is because let's not let's not you know beat around the bush the next generation is, is going to be predominantly English speaking from the parents all the way to the children right and um, if we don't produce projects um, across all media platforms within the English language, then we're going to lose um, a whole massive segment of our community. Um, and un unfortunately, in, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, our parents are trying to latch on to our mother tongues. So be it Urdu or Persian or Arabic or, or, or Iraqi, whichever dialect it is. But the situation, and let's be realistic, the situation is that, you know, if I know 50% of my parents know, then my children are going to know 25% of my grandfather and then so on and so forth until unfortunately it's lost. However, the point here is not let's lose the Arabic in, t in, in, in favor of the English. No, we're trying to f you know, make sure that our, our, our children and the next generation do um, keep their mother tongues, of course, as part of their cultural and identity. Oh, yeah. However, the main point here is that we're trying to push the, the words of the Ahlul Bayt through a mel m melody and a tune towards towards them, towards their hearts and minds, through you poetry. Have, you have recently created your own style, which is which yeah. is which is amazing because it's touching more communities out there. Because we have communities who have like the melodies that come from Urdu language or Arabic or yeah. so But you've touched a, a melody which 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 is different, is more open. What inspired you to Yeah, so I mean so. I, I did a couple of projects where I, I, I went back to what I know and what I'm comfortable with. Mm -hmm. But then I thought, well, this 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 community which I'm I'm reciting to, it's probably about twenty percent of the silent majority. Course, by the yeah, way, yeah, yeah. in terms of the Shia, those those who are on social media, and those who like and share and stuff like that, they are they they're the majority, but they're quite a loud majority. They like to make a, a big noise about their Shia identity, which is fine. But there's a lot of silent majority out there who just agree, see yeah. from afar, not really interested in religion much, not really interested in the in the cultural aspects of the melodies and stuff like that. What I what I wanted to do was to say, okay, well, look, what are you interested in? Mm -hmm. And they were more interested in Western style melodies. So I thought, let me produce one or two tracks to see 
if that does resonate with them. And alhamdulillah, it kind of it kind of resonated um, with one or two tracks, three or four maybe didn't really. I kind of went too far maybe, or um, I didn't hit the right no, tunes. But or yeah, but there's some hearts that you need to touch in a different way. For yeah, so yeah. I just I just thought well, you know, the message of the debate isn't exclusive to cultural forms of for those who are born Shia born Shia exactly, exactly and to, yeah. to those who are born outside of um, the you know even 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 those who are for example converts or whatever those anyone who's as not associated with the typical kind of cultural Shia identity mm -hmm. that they have mm -hmm. just just there's a again there's a silent mi majority out there who wanted to tap into but there's people who, we'll gr see. who grow up without any the blessings of majority or mosque yeah. around them there's, there's places around the world exactly. where they, they're very far from these things exactly. and grow up in a different environment exactly, exactly. Uh, okay yeah. bless us with your so I, I, I actually since, since you did mention that there is something where I was kind of working on in terms of a western style mm -hmm. um, uh, project it's it's still in the works though so Forgive yeah, me for any shortcomings. For I've been wanting, wanting to see you forever As long as I can remember I wish to see your shrine I know soon we will be together For you I would do whatever It takes to prove your mind Every step that I take Every Every step that I take Every time that I think Every move that I make Every time that I blink I see you near me I want to feel free Where I long to be Oh Ali, oh Ali, oh Ali, oh Ali I spend all my time dreaming of you You can make me feel brand new You are my only cure I wish for a love that feels so true The pain of the world, the pain of the world I'd go through You make me feel so pure In you I place my hope To help ease all my strife Without you I can't cope You're the love of my life I see you near me I want to to feel free where I long to be Oh Ali, oh Ali, oh Ali, oh Ali I'll see you soon and then I'll feel free I reach your land, can you see me? For you I've come so far I don't know without you who I would be You make my heart feel complete For you I thank Allah For you I'd give my all To have you by my side My heart, body and soul from your love I can't hide I see you near me I want to feel free Where I long to be Oh Ali, oh Ali Oh Ali, oh Ali Salla ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad Allahumma salla ala Muhammad wa Ahsantum that was absolutely beautiful and the words are very very touching they're very simple and yeah. it touches the heart which is which is amazing amazing that, by the way that's a whole other discussion in terms of the words that are used and how to fit it with the melody as well though. great we're going to know we'll that, that to right after the break inshallah brothers and sisters do join us right after the break inshallah we'll be with you shortly <laughs> Dear viewers, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome back to Verses of Love. Man kuntu mawla, fahadha aliyan mawla, Allahumma wali man wala, wa'adi man aada. Sayyidna, this is the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
Um, on that day, when he when he said this, well, there's a lot of hatred happening, and a lot of people actually did do the bay'ah. What is the importance of wilayat Amir al-Mu'mineen on that special day? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, this, the wilayat of Amir al-Mu'mineen in itself is a is uh, an important, the the most important factor of acceptance of iman, of uh, establishment of the faith. You know, Al-Baqir alayhi salatu salam says that faith is based on five things, salatu wa zakatu wa hajju wa sawmu wa wilaya and wa wilaya tu ahammahuma. And wilaya is the most important amongst them because all the rest are dependent on, on this wilaya. Regarding this particular day, I'll just share a few narrations from Imam Sadiq alayhi salatu salam about the importance of the day and uh, and how how that would highlight to us the importance of the wilaya that this is the day of wilaya and how important it is that the day that it's announced is so important imam sadiq alayhi salatu salam says an sadiq alayhi salatu salam wallahi law arif an nas fadl hadha al yawm bi haqiqatihi li safahatuhum al malaikatu fi kulli yawm 10 marrat if people were to know the importance or uh, were to understand the importance and the greatness of this holy day in its reality, then the angels would come and shake hands with them ten times a day. وَمَا أَعْتَى اللَّهُ لِمَنْ عَرَفُهُ مَا لَا يُحْسَى بِعَدَدِهِ And whosoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the uh, understanding or the uh, in, uh, importance of this holy day, that, that, that person cannot count the blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that cannot be enumerated, that fact that he has been able to recognize this holy day. Now, Sadiq alayhi salam in another narration says, Wa yomu ghadir bayn al fitri wal adha wa yomu al jumu'a kal qamari bayn al kawakib. That amongst the days of Eid, ghadir uh, stands out like the moon stands out amongst the planets. That its importance, its significance out of all of the days of Eid compared to al fitr and adha and Friday, is that it's, it illuminates amongst all of the days of Eid. It's illuminating because of this. Then he says regarding the days of Eid, إِذَا كَانَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ رُفِعَتْ أَرْبَعَةُ أَيَّامِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ كَمَا تُزِفُ الْعُرُوسُ إِلَى خُذْرِهَا يَوْمُ الْفِتْرِ وَالْيَوْمُ الْعَضْحَى وَيَوْمُ الْجُمْعَى وَيَوْمُ الْخَدِيرِ that on the day of judgment, four days will hasten towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like a bride hastens towards her chamber, the day of fitr, of adha, of Friday and of the day of Khadi. So in reality, the, this, the significance and importance of this day and all of these narrations signifying the importance and the exclusivity of this holy day are telling us that the wilad of Amir al-Mu'min is so important that Holy Prophet of Islam chooses this occasion where there's the most number of people present, where it is the significant place. It's not at Mecca, it's not at Medina, it's at a place where he hasn't been before to make the announcement unique, to put uh, camel saddles, to make the mimbar unique. In, in each and every respect, the Holy Prophet of Islam is making this day unique, memorable, remember. Uh, to be remembered for posterity, to tell us that this is how important this holy day is, and this is how important the wilaya of Amirul Mu'min Salam is in perfecting, in completing, in making the religion safe and secure from the enemies who are going to, who are going to come after it. Hassan um, Sayyidna, Shahbaz. So a lot of uh, youngsters nowadays, obviously. Um, trying to get into poetry uh, I believe in the center of al Haider, you guys have a group of youngsters who actually uh, write and recite their own poems right? yeah we do we have um, we have a brilliant um, so alhamdulillah we have my father um, who really started this drive at the uh, at Haidari Imam Baga uh, Husseiniya to start doing mm -hmm. poetry in English 
um, it was it, you know it was frowned upon at first like what, what do you think you're doing kind of thing um, and I remember he used to stand up like you know when the Maulana's going towards the pulpit and he'd stand up and he'd read these verses of poetry in English and it became you know it became a bit more significant uh, people started taking notice and uh, they actually started giving airtime, as to say, um, before the majlis. They'd, they'd, you know, you'd, he'd get the mic and stuff like that. And uh, I believe it inspired other poets within the mosque to start writing their own poetry. We have some amazing talent. You must have heard of Sajid Ali Dina. Uh, we've got some up and coming younger boys as well. Um, and we have workshops uh, on certain nights especially in nights of high spirituality in Ramadan, um, in uh, Muharram, we, you know, when the kids are passionate and the, the, the passion's burning and they want to get things on paper, uh, we really do try to encourage them to do, the, to do their own poetry. Of course, of course, yeah. You know, you mentioned the workshops. What do you cover in those workshops, especially from a poetry point of view? Um, so in the workshops, we assist the kids with, uh, or assist the youngers with, uh, just the general basics of poetry. You get rhyming couplets, you get haikus, you get ballads, there's different ways of writing. And we let them explore um, something that's become big with uh, other, other shit reciters is um, what you call free verse. Um, so it doesn't have a style, but it has a rhythm. Uh, it might not rhyme, but it flows nicely, and it's it's more about the passion in the words rather than the rhythmical side to it or the or the poetical side to it. Even it's it's a way of expression, um, and you know if if people have love for the Ahlul Bayt, then express your love. That's the only way other people would learn to love the Ahlul Bayt. Um, but I want to touch on uh, someone very special to Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam on this poem. Uh, none other than Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra salam Allahi alayha. <coughs> Baqi is only called Jannah because of her presence. Baqi is only called Jannah because of her presence. Heaven is only heaven because of her essence. Without, without, her, heaven without her, heaven fools you. It's a pretense. Her lovers are heaven's contents. Without Fatima, Islam would make no sense. If you say, I am a Muslim, and you don't know Fatima, you follow nonsense. Fatima, ya Fatima, the queen of heaven, not its princess. So how will you enter heaven if she is the one you oppressed? Allah. How will you enter heaven if she is the one you oppressed? Salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. I would not know what greatness Allah could create if he did not create you. So Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. I would not know what, uh, what greatness Allah could create. I would not know what greatness Allah could create if he did not create you. I would not know Allah himself if I could not relate to you. All that the heavens and the earth cannot equate to, infinite numbers cannot calculate you. O oh Ali, there are those who negate you. O oh Ali, there are those who try to relegate you. But I, I do nothing. How can your status be raised any further? For it is not man, Ali, but Allah who elevates you. Allah, Allah, Ahsan. And I want to touch on another special personality. Imam Ali had a very soft spot for Abu Fadl Abbas and it's evident on the day of Safin. And this is in praise of Abu Fadl Abbas People look for the moon from one side of the world to another. This is relating to Eid, by the way. People look for the moon from one side of the world to the other, when all they really have to do is just take one look at Hussein's brother. Allah, Allah. Once I had set my eyes upon the door of Qamra Bani Hashim, I answer all others ask. Why do I need Eid or the moon? I. Abu Shahbaz have found heaven's moon. I have found the Abu Fadl Abbas. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Shahbaz, just a quick question. What kind of advice would you give to the communities out there if there's anyone who has a center or has an organization which uh, contains youth? What advice would you give to them to push forward these poetries? Um, touching on what Brother Ali Fadl said earlier, Mullah Ali Fadl said earlier, um, at first, it's difficult for people to... Th they've grown in such a culture. Um, for us, it was in Urdu and even Gujarati to an extent. 
Uh, we've grown up in a culture where everything was like that. I had a discussion recently where um, even before Salah, when you do your niya, uh, we were taught to say in Urdu, you'd say, Ya Allah, Mecharakat namaz, Bartaw, Asr namaz, you know, yeah. So, so we were taught, you know, the second best thing, even, even Qunut, we were told to like, if you don't know what to say in Qunut, say something in Urdu. Um, but as, as you've said that the, the youth, the, the, it's unfortunate, but it's, it's because of the society around, they're losing their mother tongues a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, I believe, I don't know if it's like this in all centers, but at Haydari we've become um, accustomed to it. All our lectures are now in English. We have our know-how, let me recitations in English. We have poetry in English. Um, yes. But for other communities who aren't so accustomed to it, at first, yeah, it's going to be a struggle. People are going to frown up on it. They're going to be like, this isn't... <coughs> You know, this isn't how we were brought up. But at the end of the day, Imam Ali says, don't raise the next generation as you were raised because the times are different, the society is different, the course, needs are different. Course. And we in England or even people in America, in Canada, in English speaking countries, um, you know, the, the, the kids, the, the youngsters are growing up in school, their friends are all speaking English. They're not speaking Urdu or Arabic They're or Farsi. Yeah, they they exactly, exactly. So. Um, take a pen, get a paper. You might not think you've got it in you, but I promise you, if you've got that passion, you've got that love for the Ahlul Bayt, miracles take place on a pen and paper, man. It, honestly, it's incredible. Course, so yeah. if you can get your pen on a piece of paper, write your heart out. You might write 50 verses and one of those is one that you're proud of. That's mission accomplished. Um, if even one of the verses is what you're proud of, then that's, that, that's, that's sometimes what it takes and that's sometimes what you need to do. Me and dad, uh, when we write for reciters, we've spent hours on hours days on days um doing poems and it might be a four verse uh, qasida or a four verse noha or <coughs> litmiya but we'll write about a hundred verses until you get the right four so it's, it's a lot of trial and error uh, it takes a lot of courage as well because it might be looked like oh you're doing poetry ha 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 but it's not it's actually something i'd very much encourage it's something that would not just you let out your happiness or your grief but it's something that i think brings you closer to the Ahlul Bayt because when you want to write poetry you need to know the facts behind something before you do it and you need to know more about the Ahlul Bayt if you want to indulge and in their praises and it will bring you closer to them as well inshallah Ahsan, 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 thank you so much uh, Mullah, uh, we are now talking about poetry and just before we went on our break well obviously I asked you about uh, the simplicity on, uh, on the poetry that you're, you're reciting and why it's so important to do so yeah. Um, again, so it's all it's all to do with what vocabulary you use for what type of melody. So, for example, with the English. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, let me give an example of the Arabic and the Persian. Okay. If you've heard Persian poetry, it's so deep and so cutting because they have an array of different words they can use for one feeling or one expression. Mm -hmm. So, same with the Arabic. Do you have even in Al Ghadir? You have twenty three meanings of friend. Uh -huh. or, 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 yeah, uh, Mola, 23 meanings of Mola. Some people say it's friends, some people say it's companion. Just that one word can mean 23 different meanings, right? So because the Arabic vocabulary is so vast, the poetry, you, you can use so many different words for that expression. With English, it's very limited. Mm. Very, very limited in terms yeah. of how, not only in terms of what you, words you can use, but what words you can use within a melody or yeah. within a certain tune. So you can't be using, you know, three syllables. Uh, the maximum you probably use is a, is a three-syllable word, mm -hmm. right? You, you can't be using anything more than that. Anything more than that, then it won't really fit with the poem, and then it's going to be too complicated yeah, people yeah. to understand what's going on, right? Start thinking too much. You yeah. Thought, yeah, you think it too much. So they need it to make it simple. And when you make it simple, it just... Uh, especially if you if you hit the right tune as well. Yeah, so yeah. if you hit the right tone and they hit the right words, <coughs> then it, it, it goes directly straight through, through the heart. It doesn't have to be sieved through. You don't have to really think about it. Exactly. Especially exactly. with the English. With the Arabic, because even the way it's given, like the Arabic, the way it's given, the poetry, it's, it's um, people take their time, people sit there and listen. But with the English, again, the people need to sit there and think because it's in English, because it's an Iraqi tune, they need to sit there and think, oh, okay, so he's reading in English and he's using this tune, so I've got to really attune to the words. Yeah, yeah. If the words are going to be complicated and like, the tune's oh, going to be complicated, just yeah. it's just going to get lost in exactly, translation. Exactly. So the simpler words you use, even if people want to sound, oh, I want to sound like I'm smart or I want to sound like, you know, I'm saying something that's really profound. Mm -hmm. But if it comes from the heart, as Shabazz was saying, it comes from the heart and you're using words that literally describe how you feel, the vehicle you use is what's important. Mm -hmm. 
the vehicle you use from your mouth all the way to the ears of that that's what's important not the words you use it's what they hear which is important exactly, exactly it's, what, yeah. it's what they hear and how they hear it which resonates because again I guess it's very technical but the sound and the sound waves and how for, for example Mullah Basim he knows how to um, he has an array of, of different voices that he can use and different tones yeah, that he can yeah. use to hit different different words. So, for example, if it's a really passionate word, he'll go high, for example. Mm -hmm. Or if it's something that he wants to show sorrow, he'll go very Soft low, down, very yeah. softer. So it all depends on how the words maybe The words could be the same, w every single poem. But it's but just the way you deliver it. It's the way it. he delivers it, which really resonates with his, with his exactly, viewers and yeah. his audiences. I said, I said. Yeah. Uh, Mullah. I um, wanted to get you all involved for this okay. last segment, yeah? And Let's I hope for the Let's for the viewers as well um, to, to get involved. I'll be, re I'll be reciting to uh, a rhythm and I'll be reciting to uh, a tone. So hopefully I'm going to be saying exactly what... I'm going to be doing what, what I just said in terms of being able to understand okay. what's, um, what's being all said. All eyes on the Sayyid. So all eyes on the Sayyid <laughs> and, his, and his clapping rhythm, inshallah. All right. Sayyid, you're, you're attuned to this. Shabazz, you're attuned to this as well. Bismillah. And I've just lost the... Yeah, here we go. It's as if my pupils I am When your virtues my I seem It's as if I am but a drop But oh Ali you are a seam It's as if the verse that bore you Was God's words be and it will be It's as if you made the word I While scared of you was the word we, you knew reality, and yet you'd make it sway. And why else would that be? Ali, Ali, you are Ali. Ali, Ali, you are Ali. Ali, Ali, you are. It's as if the Kaaba's honor was given to it by your birth. It's as if the land of Najaf without your body has no worth. It's as if the star shines on us. It's as if the star shine to us. Whilst you're shrine to them from the earth. Whilst you shine to them from the earth. Earth. And when the sun's born in the sky, your light challenges its rebirth. They say I disbelieve, yet you made me believe. How great is my Lord if Ali, Ali, you are Ali. Ali, Ali, you are If I start listing your virtues I'll never finish this poem The Lord made me aware of you And you made me aware of him You're the ship that sails in the heart The joy of the flow The joy of the flow of bloodstream your name leaves heavens divided Your name leaves heavens divided The lower heavens of you dream The lower heavens of you dream You have left existence Confused by your presence As you outweigh it all Ali, you are Ali Ali, Ali, you are Ali. Ali, Ali, you are Ali. I'll finish on one last poem. They asked me, the angels, they asked me, how did you spend your youth? I replied, I spent it searching. I replied, I spent it searching for the truth. I was confused. Who was the leader after the Nabi? I was confused. Who was the leader after the Nabi? For how can the Prophet leave without appointing a wasi? For how can the Prophet leave without appointing a wasi? They told me a man. 
They told me, oh man, go and search the events of Ghadir. They told me, oh man, go and search the events of Ghadir. Upon which all the Muslims said, upon which all the Muslims said, Bakhin, Bakhin, Bika, Ya Ali. صلى على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد أحسنتم أحسنتم that was absolutely beautiful brothers and sisters we thank Sayyid Zafar for his uh, amazing amazing knowledge given to us and uh, the blessing poems by Shahbaz and may Allah inshallah keeping in the, in the path of the Ahlul Bayt inshallah and bless his father for bringing up such a great uh, Shabab and of course we thank Mullah Ali Father for joining us today and inshallah join us again for verses of love uh, we'll see you soon inshallah wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh